Hi everybody, this is Douglas at PCC, and in the next five minutes, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about lab order configuration in PCC EHR. Well, almost everything anyway, because I can put way more details here at learn.pcc.com, but this video will get you started. What is a lab order? What am I configuring? Uh, orders in PCC EHR are special little components right here on the chart note. So here I'm looking at a well visit chart note for Dino Flintstone and right on the chart note I can order all kinds of stuff. I can order medical procedures. I can order immunizations. And I can order labs. Just clicking order creates the order for the patient. Sometimes the order might be configured to appear right on this four year well chart note and sometimes I may have to type one in. After creating the order for a patient, I can immediately click edit and I get lots of options and details about the order. There are lots of features and settings I could change right now. Some of them will be remembered for me because of how I work and filled out for me, such as which nurse is typically assigned for the order. Um, and down below, you can see all the different fields related to how this lab order will behave. One important one down here, will this order be visible on patient output? Um, this is where I can set, hey, I don't want this to be visible on patient reports or in the patient portal, my kids chart, or it's okay if it is. Now I can see the results field, I can see a note field I can take notes in as I do the lab order. I also know that since I ordered this and it's incomplete, it's going to show up as an orange ball back on the schedule screen. Um, the nurse will be able to pick it up and make sure it gets completed, uh, fill out the requisition form, send it off to the hospital or lab, and I'll be all set. When results for this lab order come in, I might get a fax or a piece of paper. I would import that, link it to this lab, and I can enter the actual discrete results right in these fields here. Or uh, my practice might receive results electronically. They'd show up on a special eLab results queue, and once they were attached to the order, I would see the results in here. Okay, so that's a lot about how lab orders work. Uh, we're going to talk about configuring this lab today. Before we do that, I want you to notice one more distinction. Uh, this is a rapid strep order. That's what we call it at my practice. I could name it the Wizard of Oz lab order if I wanted to. Uh, inside this lab order, you see the actual lab tests. This rapid strep screen, uh, that's based on uh, LOINC. It's a nationwide official lab test uh, that I track results for. Uh, this one is boring, rapid strep. Uh, but if I go look at a urinalysis lab order, I see a whole bunch of tests that we track when we do a urinalysis. And I can configure this for my practice. What do I collect? What do we track over time? Okay, we'll be referring back to that later, but I wanted you to see lab orders in action. Now let's talk lab configuration. First, I go to the lab configuration tool in the tools menu. I have a user role which lets me do this. Not everyone in your practice needs to run this tool. And the first thing I see in the lab configuration tool is a list of all the configured labs at my practice. I'm working on a test database. There's a lot of weird stuff in here. Your lab list will look different from this list. But I see my practice's name for the lab and a whole bunch of other details. I could even scroll to the right here about that lab. Remember how lab orders have one or more tests attached to them? I can click this little disclosure arrow to see a list of all those tests. A CBC is another complex lab. A lot of different discrete lab tests are inside this lab order. Okay, I could click add lab order to create a new lab order from scratch, or I can double click on one and make changes. Uh, let's look at, oh, lead screen. Lead screen's nice and easy. Here is all the stuff I can configure about a lab order. Let's talk about each of these settings. First off, like I said, the lab order name. You can name it anything you want to. Um, some offices, if they have a lab order that they do both in-house or send out sometimes, they might, they might put 
in-house at the end of this to indicate that. Whatever the lab order name will work best for your workflow. I can set a default lab facility. So here we go. Uh, maybe sometimes I do this lab order at uh, the east office or the west office. Um, or maybe this is a lab order that sometimes goes to a hospital or sometimes I fill out a requisition form for, I don't know, Quest or some other lab vendor. I could set a default lab facility if I wanted to, or I could leave this blank. And then the clinician could pick the lab facility uh, during the time of service while they're sitting there on the chart note. Next, we have four really powerful uh, settings for each lab order. First, will it have a field for enabling specimen collection? Some labs do, some labs don't. Uh, next, by default, will this lab order be visible on patient reports? This is the include on patient reports checkbox. So at the end of the visit, when you print a patient visit summary, or when the mom or dad asks for a visit summary, um, will they be able to see this lab order? Um, similarly, uh, will this lab order by default show up in my kid's chart, the patient portal? Now, this is just gonna change the default setting for new instances of this lab. Any clinician in a patient's chart can deselect the option that makes it visible in patient output. Uh, this just sets what new lab orders will be like when the order is created. Next, you see these two allow fields. Uh, this just determines whether this lab order has a setting that allows you to indicate it was refused or contraindicated. Next up, we have SNOMED CT procedure for reporting. I can optionally click add a procedure and find the SNOMED description that I want tracked with this lab order. This actually doesn't affect much in the patient's record. It doesn't affect billing either. Uh, it does affect certain reporting tools for meeting incentive programs. Uh, so meaningful use measures, the EHR Medicaid incentive program, or clinical quality measures. By using this tool, um, this lab order instance can be tracked for those purposes. Finally, we get to the exciting stuff. We have an eLab vendor order mapping section, and we have a tests to include for manual results entry section. The eLab vendor one is simple. Either your practice can receive electronic results from a vendor, or they can't for this, for this order. This is lead screen, so you probably do it right in your practice. But if you're using an out-of-office facility and you have an eLab vendor agreement with that facility, those results can be sent directly to PCCEHR. So how do you link up the results and the communication with your lab order? Well, you do it right here. So in this case, you would get the official lead screen code from LabCorp or Quest, put that in here, and then that would allow the results to be linked up to this lab order on a patient's chart. You can also search and find the Quest lab that you want, uh, but I, we recommend you actually get the code number from either the requisition form or the website or talk to your representative um, to make sure that these results will line up with your lab order the way you want them to. But for other types of labs that you don't receive results electronically, you add the official tests down here at the bottom. This one is very simple, uh, uh, LOINC 5671-3, uh, and I know that this will give me the fields I need to record data on this lab test in this lab order. For every test, you'll notice this checkbox down here. Um, whether or not I need to enter an interpretation before this lab order can be considered complete. Okay, those are all the settings in the Edit Lab Order section. I'm going to click Save and go show you a more complicated example. Go look at your analysis. Just as before, I can see I've got my practice's lab order name. In this case, I've actually added a default lab facility. This would be because whenever my practice sends out a year analysis, we always send it to this facility, so I put that in there. Got all the settings I mentioned before, and down at the bottom you can see there are a lot more tests. Now in this situation, my practice has decided we're gonna record every last bit of data that the lab sends back to us. So we've added all of the LOINC tests from that to this lab order. Optionally, my practice might decide to only have uh, seven or eight of the urinalysis tests in here. Uh, we get the full lab results order form uh, from the uh, lab facility. We scan that and import it. It ends up attached to this order. 
Um, so we might decide, hey, you know what? We're going to discreetly track um, seven or eight of the most important urinalysis points, and that's all we're going to have in here. In that case, I would not have all 17 of the urinalysis tests. I would only have the seven or eight that I use. Now, my practice sometimes does a urine dip right in the office. Um, for that, I'm going to add a new lab order. Here we go. I'm going to call it whatever I want. I'm going to have default facility be here. All these settings are fine. I don't mind if this lab order is immediately visible on patient reports and in the patient portal. And now I'm ready to add the things that I actually want to record when I do a urine dip. And I would continue forward doing nitrate, protein, pH, and so forth. Okay, while we're in the lab configuration tool, I want to show you the rest of what's in here. Uh, we have common tests over here. Now this is a master dictionary of all the different LOINC tests. So if I was hunting for exactly the right LOINC to fill out my lab orders, I could do that on this page. Um, it also lets me adjust which ones are searchable when I'm editing a lab order. Uh, there's 60,000 entries, so you can't find all of them. You have a list of commonly used ones. The third tab is Lab Facilities. And this is pretty straightforward. You can double click to edit one of these or click add to add a new lab facility and fill out all the information about the facility. Finally, I'll show you one nifty tool in PCC EHR. It's called Snap Labs. I can add a lab that will trigger other labs. So I configure these individual lab orders and then I could click add snap lab order to make a lab order that would really trigger the other lab orders. Uh, what is this useful for? At my practice, we did this in a couple of places. So for example, I could have a single click that would order both the rapid strep and the throat culture. That would be handy, since about 90% of the time I'm going to be ordering both of them. Um, then I could just click one, and if there was no throat culture needed, I could cancel that. I know of another practice that set up a genitourinary snap lab. It just says genitourinary, and when they click it, they'll get the urinalysis, the PAP, and the UPT all ordered. Okay, there's a few more things before I wrap up this video I want to show you about lab configuration, but we're done in the lab configuration tool. Remember when we were looking at this chart note protocol, we had some labs right here on the chart note so that I could just click order. You can set that up for your practice in the protocol configuration tool. I go into the protocol builder. Oof, we've got a lot of chart notes in here. Uh, I pick the chart note I'm working on. I open up the lab order component in that chart note. And here I can add any labs I want to be clickable by default. So this is a good example for this two-year well visit. I just wanted to have hemoglobin, lead screen, and cholesterol labs right there on the chart note, so the clinician just had to click order and didn't have to find them. Next, while we're in here, and we talked about all those options for lab orders, um, what about for medical procedures or other orders that I can make? Lab orders are special. They get their own lab configuration tool. Uh, for other orders, you want to go into the component builder. Find the component you're dealing with, such as uh, medical procedures. Order components, by the way, have a little orders tacked on to the end. Makes it easier to find them. And I pop open the order I want to work with. This should look very familiar, just like we talked about with the lab configuration for lab orders. I can choose whether or not this medical procedure will be visible by default on patient reports. I can allow it to be refused or indicated. I can add procedures for reporting, and I can add tests for tracking as well. Okay, last thing I want to show you for lab configuration, we got a bill for this stuff, right? When a physician clicks order to make an order, I want their billing screen, uh, the electronic encounter form, to automatically select the right CPT codes for billing. How do I set that up? I go to the billing configuration tool, and I find the order I want to map. So, very simple, anytime anyone orders a rapid strep screen, the 87880 rapid strep screen procedure is going to show up on the electronic encounter form. 
a couple things about this. I won't go into too many details, but I can also add billing diagnoses, which is kind of odd. Diagnoses should be on the chart note when the clinician enters the diagnosis for the patient. But in some circumstances, it makes sense to have an order, a lab order or any other kind of order, automatically trigger a ICD-10 billing diagnosis as well. The one that comes to mind immediately for me are the immunization orders. I automatically want to have that Z23 show up on the encounter form. I wouldn't have the clinician enter Z23 on the chart note. Okay, you now know all the lab order configuration basics. There's a lot more to learn about lab configuration, about the chart note protocol configuration tool and the billing configuration tool. Uh, we looked at those briefly, but there's more to learn here. Uh, here are some links to learn more about these topics. But my favorite link for all things PCC is this one. Call us, email us. PCC support members know how orders and components work on chart notes. They can help you adjust these settings so that your practice's order workflow is as fast, efficient, and user-friendly as possible. Thank you for watching, and if you've got a topic you'd like to see a short video about, send a request to feedback at pcc.com.